Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use Microsoft Excel to track my spending using data that I've exported from my bank statements and using that information, I will then make further videos showing you how I set up a budget and also how that all interlinks with my financial goals. Hi, I'm Tom and welcome to my channel where we focus on all things related to personal finance delivered from a UK perspective. If you're new here and you're interested in joining me on a journey to improving your personal finances, then make sure you click subscribe and turn on notifications. Right, so I'm at my desk and before we jump into my laptop, I would just like to point out that I am by no means an Excel wizard. I know a few basic things about how to use Excel and no doubt there will be some people who know how to use Excel much better than I do, sitting there confused and horrified at how clunky I am using the program. But I do my best and I'm going to show you how I use it and it might not be the best way to use it, but it works for me and that's what's important. And the second thing to say is there's a lot of apps out there that you can download now on your phone and they will analyze and track your spending and they're pretty good but I think there's a lot of value in creating your own spreadsheet and doing a more manual process I feel like you're you're being more involved makes you more committed to really getting your spending under control using this method and that's why I use Excel and I don't use any of these apps so without further ado let's get into it right so here we are in my Excel spreadsheet so all I've done so far is I've logged into my online banking and I've gone to my transactions. Uh, this spreadsheet is going to be for January of this year. So what I've done is I've gone into my transactions and I imagine most online banking will be very, very similar to this. So go into transactions, filter for transactions going out and I filtered for transactions between the 1st of January and the 31st of January. So then what I've done is I've exported that in what is called a CSV file. So a CSV file is a file that is compatible with, with Excel. So once you've exported that, you can import it into Excel or copy and paste into Excel into a spreadsheet. So that's what I've done so far. I've not done anything as of yet. So we've got a first category here, a date. This is going to be quite important because it will help you identify where you were or what you were doing that day to try and help you remember what each transaction was. Next, we've got a category called amount, which obviously shows you how much you spent. So the first thing we can actually do here is just click up here to highlight this row. And we wanna click up here where it says general, and we're going to change this to currency. Now, one th important thing to note is that the numbers are in minuses. So if you need to go in and amend any of these figures, uh, for example, if you paid for something, say £100, but someone else was giving you £50 of that back, you were splitting the cost of something, you would then need to come into here and amend that figure to change it to £50 because you didn't pay the whole £100. But you need to remember that these figures are all in minuses. So always remember to change it to 50 pounds and make sure it's minus 50 pounds because otherwise what will happen is when it comes to summing up how much you spent for the month, if you've got all your figures in negatives, but then you've edited a figure and left it as a positive, it's going to throw your, your final results. So that's one thing to remember there. The next category we've got is called subcategory. Now this is a category that I used to sort of go back and forth as to whether I should keep it or not, if I should delete it. In the end, I've decided that it's probably worth keeping it because it does tell you where certain payments are, say a direct debit, um, and some of them say FT, which I think is when you make a bank transfer to someone. So if you're struggling to remember what you spent on something, maybe seeing if it's a direct debit or a bank transfer might help you figure out what it is. So I've decided to keep it. Next up here, we have what's called a memo. So this is just a, a brief description of what the payment was. Now, 
I have removed a little bit of information from this section because there was some you know privacy issues so I've, I've removed a bit of the data but your spreadsheet will look very similar if you export it from your your bank account now the first thing we're going to do is like I said this is for January 2020 so we'll just come down here to this tab and rename this to January 2020 Next, we're going to come up here and name this category. And this is going to be the part where we spend some time identifying what each payment here relates to. And because I like to format my spreadsheets so that they're quite easy to read, I usually like to add some color. So we'll highlight that blue, put a thick border, make sure everything is centered, and in bold that just makes the heading easier to read um, it just makes everything easier going forward now what we want to do in here is we're going to spend some time identifying what each of these payments are uh, for example we've got council tax here as we can see according to this memo this is council tax which I like to call house bills now when I first started doing my spreadsheet I would spend just time doing this freehand um, just manually inputting the data onto the spreadsheet. But what I found is after doing this for about four years now and having four years worth of data is one thing you don't want is to have inconsistent categories uh, throughout your entire worksheet because when you want to analyze the data, one thing that you're going to need is consistent categories across the board. Now, this is where this data validation section will comes into play down here and the purpose of this sheet is I actually already know what categories go into this spreadsheet because like I say this is from January so I already know which categories need to be inputted into here so I've just written them down here in a list and sorted them alphabetically now what we can do with this list is if we return to our January 2020, what we can do is highlight this category section like this, click data up here at the very top, and we can click this little tab called data validation. Now, what this is going to let us do is if we select list, it's gonna let us choose a source. And what we want is we want the list that we created earlier. So I click on this icon here, come back to my data validation, highlight this list and press enter. So now it says list and we've got our correct source. We can press OK. Now what this is going to let me do is make sure that whenever I choose a category, I make sure that all of the items in the same category are going to be, there's not going to be any spelling mistakes or anything like that. They're all going to be perfectly uniform, which is going to be really great for us analyzing our data further down the line. So what I'm going to do now is I will go through and categorize all our spending here. And once I'm finished, I'll come back and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now that I have categorized everything, what I can do is select everything. And once I've got everything selected, click home. We want to sort and filter. I just like to sort it from A to Z. I can also then add a thick border and let's give it some color. And I'm going to color it purple. Okay. So now we've got a slightly more organized version of our data, but what would be nice is to have a nice summary of how much we spent in each category over the month. So that's what we're going to do next. So we'll create a little section over here called summary. 
and we'll merge and center that and give it some color. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to take this list of categories that we have here on the left and we need to extract the unique values so that we'll be able to add up how much we spend, say, for house bills, how much we spent on motoring costs and just add it into one figure. So to do that, what we need to do is we'll just grab this, click on data, click advanced. And what we want to do is we want to copy to another location. We want to select unique records only. And then we'll click copy to and we want to copy it here. And then we'll press OK. So now we have a nice list of each category with no duplicates. OK. Now what we want to do is we want to add up how much we've spent in each category. So what we're going to do is what we're going to do is called naming. And what you have to do is highlight this category section, click insert, name, define name. And it will say here category. So all we're going to do is add January, January 2020 and click OK. And We'll do the same for amount. Same again, insert, name, define name. So amount is already pre-populated. So January, January 2020, amount, and click OK. Great. So now what we can do is we're going to a little sum sum if and once you click sum if it'll bring up this little bar here and you can click on this FX button here and that will allow us to build our formula so we're just going to use the two names that we've just used so January 2020 category and we know we've done it right because it's highlighted in blue so the criteria is what we want to add up. So in this case, it will be books, which is located in cell G3. So we just type G3 in here. And you'll know you've got the right one because it will highlight the box in red. And what we want to add is the January 2020 amount. And again, you'll know you've done it right because it's highlighted in purple. So we press enter and we can now close out of this formula builder. So if we look at books over here, we can see that we spent 10 pounds on books. So we can see that here it's added it correctly. So now what we're going to do is we'll just hover our, we'll click, select the box where it says 10 and just hover in the corner and click until the mouse turns black and we can drag all the way down. So what it's done there is it's just added the formula to every box that I've just dragged down on. And we'll add a little total here at the bottom. And I'll do equals sum. And you can click on here and it will build the formula sum. And then I'll click on the number 10 and drag all the way down. Make sure you don't include the box where it says sum. So you drag all, get all your figures in and press enter. So let's quickly format this into a currency. Right. So if we wanted to check that, that this total is correct, we can come down here, click equals sum. And we, again, click sum and we'll grab every value up here and click enter. So 1,202 and 43 pounds. So that is correct. We know that we've done our formula correctly. So let's come up here and do some formatting. So let's unbold this. 
and give it a gray color and a box. And now for the same over here, let's give it a color, say orange and put it in a box. And our total is going to be in green. And we will bold and underline. So now, as you can see, we've got a nice little summary of how much we have spent this month and how much we've spent in each category. So we will highlight our category with our headings and our total expenditure. And we can click insert and we will add a table. Okay, keep this little box checked. The one says my table has headers and click OK. Now, I don't really like the formatting with the line, so I click all the way to the last box here on the left and that takes the lines away. I also remove this filter button here because I don't need it for the time being. So I remove that. And I also like to name the table. So this would be January 2020 summary. So now I have named my table and I've got my summary. So this is, this is a nice way to just have a nice summary and you can see, you know, how much you spent eating out or how much you, your bills are costing you every month. And once you've got quite a lot of data that you can aggregate in one place, which is what I'm going to show in the next video, really we're, we're going to spend some time seeing where the majority of our expenditure is going and seeing if there's anywhere we can make changes and how it fits into how much we're actually earning each month. So it, it's going to play a, a major part in us paying down debts, setting down saving goals and everything of that nature. But that's pretty much it for this part. This was just the most basic of exporting the data from, from your bank putting it in and getting it organized in a manner that is actually kind of it makes sense and is useful. Obviously in the next videos, we'll go a bit more in depth and see how we can sort of analyze this and we'll take it forward from there. So make sure you tune into the next video for that. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.